مرحبا okay. In the previous session we learned how do we construct new propositions from older propositions using the logical connectives and we called all these propositions compound propositions Remember we start how, how do we build compound propositions We start so this is compound Okay propositions how do we build them first we start with propositional variables propositional variables and these are, are like p q r s and so on and second we apply the logical connectives negation conjunction disjunction implication and if and only if and remember that we defined the truth value of every uh, for every of these logical connectives for the negation, conjunction, disjunction, implication, and the biconditional statement, if and only. Now, we want to use these definitions. We want to use the truth tables of these connectives to uh, have the truth table to build the truth table of any compound proposition we want. Okay, I will illustrate the idea with an example. So let's consider this uh, compound proposition, which is say we start with the with the uh, variable p and the variable q, then we take the negation of q and then we take the disjunction of both. See now the negation of q is a proposition and p is a proposition. We take the disjunction of them. So now we have a new proposition. Then we take this as the hypothesis of a conditional statement and where the conclusion is P and Q. Okay, so see here, now uh, we have a new proposition. This whole thing is a new proposition, compound proposition. It's constructed using two propositional variables, P and Q, and here we use negation, here's disjunction, Conjunction and then at the end we used we connected this the hypothesis with the conclusion with the uh, Imply implication connective the arrow. Okay. Now we want to construct the truth table of this proposition Okay, so this again, let me clarify the idea that this is a proposition. It's a compound proposition and What is a proposition? It's a statement which is either true or false, but not both so the question is, tell me whether this proposition is a true or false. Well, it depends on the truth value values of P and Q. So let's see how. Here is the proposition P and here is the proposition Q. P could be true or false and Q could be true or false. This will give us four scenarios. When P is true and Q is true, when P is true and Q is false, when P is false and Q is true, and finally when both are false. Now our target is to find the truth value of this proposition, big one, in every scenario. Let's call this proposition alpha. Okay, we want to find the truth value of alpha. Well, first to compute the truth value of alpha, we will find the truth values of the constituent uh, propositions. So here the smallest one is not Q. So let's compute what is the truth value of not Q. Well, we know that not Q is false when Q is true and it's true when Q is false. It's false when Q is true and it is true when Q is false. Now let's compute this proposition P or not Q. P or not Q. Q. So now we are looking at this is P and this is not Q and we want to take the disjunction of these two. So true or false is true. We define the disjunction to be true when P, when at least one of the parts uh, constituent uh, propositions uh, are true, when at least one is true. So since P is true, then this is true. Now in the second case, since P is true, it is true. Now here, P and not Q are both false, so here it is false. And since not Q is true here, then the disjunction of false or true is true. OK, 
Okay, so we computed this. Now we want to compute P and Q. P and Q, but we know P and Q is true only in one case, when both P and Q are true, so just in the first row. Okay, now one last step to compute the truth value of alpha. What is alpha? It is P or not Q, so it's P or not Q, it's this proposition, implying this proposition. Okay, now true implies true is true. True implies false is false. This is the only way where a conditional statement is false, when we have a true hypothesis and a false conclusion. So this is the hypothesis or the premise and this is the conclusion. Okay, now false implies false. We know it's true. Any conditional statement with a false uh, hypothesis is, is automatically true. You can revise the, uh, co the truth table of the conditional statement. Now here, true implies false is also is false. It's the same as the second rule. When we have a true hypothesis and the false conclusion, then the conditional statement is false. Okay, so this is the truth value of alpha for when we know the truth value of the constituent propositional variables p and q. So you can say when p is true and q is true, then alpha is true. And when p is true and q is false, then alpha is false, and so on. Okay. So you can think of alpha as a machine which has two inputs. What are the two inputs? They are p and q, and the output is true or false based on what you assign for p and what you assign for q. For example, in this row, when p is false and q is true, the output should be true. Okay. So this is how we construct the truth table of compound propositions. From the truth tables of the logical operators we introduced. Okay, finally, let me finish this session by saying that we usually use parentheses. See here, we use parentheses to, to make it clear which operator we are applying uh, be before the other. But if we don't, then we have a convention, which is uh, called the precedence of logical operators. So let me put it in a table. Here is the precedence. And here is the op logical operator. Okay, the operator with number one precedence, which means you, you apply it first, is the negation. And the second is the conjunction. You apply conjunction. So if you have this uh, negation and conjunction, first you apply the negation. Third, you apply the disjunction. Fourth, you apply the implication. And fifth, you apply the by conditional statement, which is if and only if statement. Okay. Let for let's have an example. Suppose you ha you have seen this string of symbols, so not p or q, not r implies s. Then what should you understand from this? Again. So since we didn't use parentheses, it's not clear which operator to apply first, but using the precedence, the precedence convention, then we know that the negation is the first to apply, and then we apply the conjunction. So here is the conjunction, you apply Q and R, and now we have two operators left, the disjunction and the implication, but we know the disjunction is stronger, so first we apply the disjunction. Okay, so this is what we mean. We mean that we, at the end of the day, what what com, what uh, compound proposition we have? We have a conditional statement. This whole thing, this whole proposition is its hypothesis, and S, sorry, and S is the conclusion. If you want to see step by step how we build it, so first we start, we have, first we, ha we construct not P, 
and then we construct Q and R. And then we have two propositions. We, we construct their disjunction. So we get not P or Q and R. And finally, we, we take the condition statement whose hypothesis is this whole thing and its conclusion is S. This is the end of this session.